tuberculosis is an infectious bacterial disease characterized by the growth of nodules tuberculous, in the tissue, affecting different organs such as skin, kidneys, intestines and lungs. Pulmonary tuberculosis is a bacterial infection of the lungs that can cause a range of symptoms including chest pain, breathlessness and severe coughing. Pulmonary tuberculosis can be life-threatening if the person does not receive treatment. The bacteria spreads through the air by the coughs, speak or singing of someone who's infected. People breathe in the bacteria and become infected. When it enters someone's body, tuberculosis affects mostly the lungs, but it also can spread and affect the kidneys, spine or brain. In the 19th century, around 50 million people worldwide were infected and 7 million died from this disease. Sanatorium is an establishment for the medical treatment of people who are convalescing or have chronic illness. Sanatorium is a scary word to describe a building that was mostly used to treat people with tuberculosis. Normally built in high mountains or in isolated places with fresh air, sanatoriums are institutes that support treatment and supervise recuperation for the ones infected. In the 20th century, roughly around 70% of people admitted got cured. 25% of people stayed in the same state or were incurable, and 5% of people died. Don't mistake asylum with sanatorium, they are not similar. While a sanatorium is to treat chronic diseases, an asylum is a place mostly defined for those with psychiatric disorders. In the late 19th century, tuberculosis grew exponentially in Portugal and it had its worsening due to the First World War. The number of deaths in the country, according to Sousa Martins, were around 20,000 deaths per year in Portugal. José Tomás de Sousa Martins Born in 1843 and died in 1897 with tuberculosis, Sousa Martins was a physician and a full professor at several universities and faculties in Lisbon. Sousa Martins graduated in pharmacy and medicine. He stood out in his fight against tuberculosis and in his commitment to the creation of ANT, National Assistance of Tuberculosis. Also responsible for the creation of several sanatoriums in Guarda, Portugal. With the concern of the increase in cases, Portugal was in need of technical advance in medicine and a strengthening of the national health system for his fight against tuberculosis. Between 1850 and 1970, several sanatoriums were created throughout the country to face this combat. Sousa Martins Sanatorium from 1907 to 1974. Caramul Sanatoriums from 1920 to 1970. Benjamin Saud Sanatorium from 1944 to 1970. Montalt Sanatorium from 1958 to 1975. 
among others, but these ones are the largest and most important. January 18, 1920 The first meeting of the Comissão Organizadora da Sociedade de Propaganda do Caramu was held, in which the following personalities were present. Guilherme Alves Moreira Jerónimo de Lacerda António Carneiro Pacheco Egas Muniz, among others. Jerónimo Maria de Lacerda Born on October 14 of 1889 in Prova, Portugal, but he grew up in Tondela with his family. He studied medicine and obtained his degree on July 29 of 1950. Due to the First World War, Jerónimo Lacerda was sent to Flanders, Belgium, as a doctor in the Portuguese Expeditionary Group. He returned to Portugal in 1918, graduated as medical captain. The interest in tuberculosis is possibly linked to his passage through Europe and taking note of the disease known as White Plague, growing exponentially. He married Margarida Castro Alves in March of 1919 and died in 1945 of a myocardial infraction. December 4th of 1920, the Society of Caramul, SARL, was created with the objective of building a hotel in Caramul for convalescent patients, collecting and distributing water, producing electricity, building roads, and creating a post office. Serra do Caramul one of the highest mountains in Portugal and with its peak located 1074 meters above sea level in a place called Caramulinho. Serra do Caramul is known for its beautiful granitic landscapes, for its museum of classic and race cars, and for a phenomenon known as Sea of Clouds characterized by a vast ocean of clouds that cover the entire landscape, leaving only the highest points uncovered. In the 20th century, the population that lived in the mountain consisted of several villages and towns that lived in houses built with granitic blocks and with minimal living conditions compared to the rest of the world. The people living in here were mostly illiterate and it was reported that there was a high infant mortality rate. In the winter, to protect themselves, the mountain people wore a hood called capucha, typical costume made of burl, which covered the body down to the knees. With fertile lands, clean air and mid climate, they were Jerónimo de Lacerda's choice for the creation of his sanatorium resort. Jerónimo de Lacerda's vision was to build a resort of infrastructures for the convalescent with or without tuberculosis. The word sanatorium gained a negative power at the time. That's why the resort was called initially in Jerónimo Lacerda's texts as Estância Climatérica do Caramul, Caramul Climate Resort, and not Estância Sanatorial do Caramul, Caramul Sanatorium Resort. Due to this strong negativity and wanting to create spaces of comfort and relaxation, Jerónimo Lacerda gave the name Grand Hotel, Grand Hotel, to the first sanatorium, which opened its doors on June 8 of 1922, receiving 47 guests.
The Grand Hotel was a building with three floors and an attic, consisting of two lateral structures and a central structure facing Serra da Estrela, which opened its length to the open-air galleries. Due to the need to isolate the tuberculosis patients and, at the same time, require their space of treatment, the sanatoriums were built with wide balconies and galleries in order to be exposed to the sun and the good airs of the mountain. These galleries were used daily for two periods of rest, in the morning and in the afternoon, with a duration of two hours each. In the first year of operation, the Grand Hotel only opened its doors between the months of March and October. Only from 1925 onwards did it open all year, aware of the increase in demand. The need to create contacts with the state and other public and private entities became evident in order to prevent the spread of the disease and to provide the best treatments. The name of the sanatorium changed over the years. In 1928, Grand Hotel Sanatorium and in 1933, Grand Sanatorium, when it began to receive, in its entirety, tuberculosis population. For this, it was equipped to meet their medical requests, creating an operating room, clinical analysis laboratory, dentistry office, central pharmacy and a sterilization area for dishes. For the most part, Patient stay was a long stop, which in many cases was without return, and knowing well the effects produced by hospitalization, Jeronimo Lacerda did not once forget about entertainment and lecture areas. He created libraries, game rooms and arranged to install a screen on one of the galleries of the sanatorium where he produced silent and sound movies. Later, due to cultural importance, a small cinema was built inside of the sanatorium. There were already 150 beds in four sanatoriums in 1930, and with the disclosure of the numbers from the general movement of the resort in 1933, the sharply increased search of the sanatorium is remarkable, with 826 patients being admitted, of which 404 left and 422 continued treatment. Of the 404 who left, 280 are said to be cured or improved, 106 are incurable or in the same state and 18 diseased. By 1934, the movement had grown to 926 patients. The entire resort was prepared for the challenges that were posed, having one of the best clinical staffs in the Iberia Peninsula, covering specialties such as general and thoracic surgeries, radiology, otolaryngology, stomatology and clinical analysis. The Grand Sanatorium was the center of all this activity where the general pharmacy, radiology service, clinical analysis laboratory and the largest archive of radiographs were located. In order to create the perfect clinical staff for the treatment of tuberculosis in Europe, in 1938, Jeronim de Lacerda invited Manuel Tapia to join his resort, offering the best position and a place to stay. Manuel Tapia Martinez Born in Murcia, Spain, on April 2nd of 1895, Manuel Tapia studied medicine, completing his degree in 1918 and doctorate in 1925. 
specialized in infectious diseases, he became director of the Sanatorium de la Fuenfira in 1932. With the Spanish Civil War, Manuel Tapia and his wife moved to Paris, where they meet Alexandre de Almeida, owner of several Portuguese hotels, who invites them to go to Portugal. Jerónimo Lacerda, already aware of Manuel Tapia's work, invites him to settle in his resort and join the clinical staff, which he promptly accepted the offer and soon began to work at the Grand Sanatorium. He died in January 1st, 1971, in Madrid. Between 1938 and 1939, Manuel Tapia held several meetings and promote various courses for doctors in order to receive theoretical and practical teaching on the treatments carried out at the sanatorium, improving their knowledge in the area of tuberculosis, thus giving great prestige and fame to the sanatorium resort of Caramulo. In 1940, there were already 15 sanatoriums and health houses with a capacity of 800 patients. 10% were admitted for free of charge in various sanatoriums. Jerónimo Lacerda clearly demonstrates the intentions to alleviate the situation of many people who did not have the possessions to do so. In 1943, Jerónimo Lacerda announced that he had abandoned the management of the clinical services due to current difficulties and in his turn, he would entrust his position to Manuel Tapia. The following year, the Bulletin Statisticas announces the end of the construction of the child's sanatorium and also the surgical pavilion and a general movement number of 1,493 patients in the resort. In the same year, the United States of America discovered a new revolutionary treatment for tuberculosis. Streptomycin. It was the first specific agent effective in the treatment of tuberculosis and one of the first aminoglycosides discovered. The discovery was made by the team led by an American biochemistry, Selman Abraham Waxman, on October 19 of 1943. From this discovery, he was born a light of hope among the tuberculosis patients for their cure. The therapies and treatments were based on daily rest, a diet rich in calories and proteins, and medium altitude climates. The most invasive treatments left sequels and sometimes had severe side effects. With the death of Jerónimo Lacerda on September 17 of 1945, the administrative direction passed on to his oldest son, Abel Lacerda, with no major changes of the functioning of the resort. Even though his eldest son was in charge, it was Manuel Tapia who held the resort's prestige as well as the clinical staff. Nineteen forty six was marked by the introduction of a new drug that was highly used in the resort, Theosomycarbazone, which was already discovered in Germany by Domac in nineteen thirty six, but not put on the market. In 1947, the general movement of the resort was 2,059 patients, with no reference to cases treated with streptomycin. But in 1948, there was a number close to 400 patients treated with streptomycin. The prices to complete the treatment with the medicine were around 30,000 to 50,000 shkuj. Also, in 1948, Manuel Tapia left the resort in October, returning to Madrid, but kept close contact as well as regular visits. During the next five years, new drugs appear on the market, such as PAS, 
hydrocyte, TB, among others. The resort continued to expand and on September 14 of 1950, the Salazar Sanatorium was inaugurated, intended only for officers, sergeants and military personnel. At the time, the Bella Vista Sanatorium, which was intended only for sailors, would already been in operation. In 1952, there was a decreased number of patients, 1,636 were admitted, from which 762 patients got out. Among those who left, there was a mortality rate of 5.7 percent and 524 patients were subjected to antibiotics and chemotherapy. That same year, a more powerful drug was discovered, isoniazid. The sanatorium resort of Karamul had not lost its fame and prestige in the treatment of tuberculosis, as well as in the academy and clinical environment of all doctors. In 1953, the resort had a set of 19 infrastructures with a total of 1,119 inpatient beds. The number of chirurgical operations was increased from 4 patients in 1950 to 17 patients in 1954, of which 5 died postoperatively, 3 with complications due to the surgery and 9 cured. With a very high rate of deaths, almost 30%, those who were exposed to the possibility of being operated on felt afraid and wrong knowing that there would be possibilities of treatments less invasive. With the resignation of the surgeon Luis Quintella, who had worked for 20 years at the resort, due to the number of deaths, in 1955 Marcel Burard entered the scene. He was a surgeon who took the mortality rate of the surgeries to 8% in 1956. The death of Abel da Cerda in 1957 in a car accident resulted in the raise of power of his brother, João de la Cerda, from clinical subdirector to clinical director. Abel de la Cerda died without witnessing what would become the greatest project of dynamization of Caramul. the Karamul Museum. His brother, without leaving his legacy behind, completes the construction of the museum and opened its doors in 1959 on the behalf of Abel and João de la Cerda Foundation. The resort remained solid and fully functioning for many years. The reduction of the contagious and mortality to 4.5% in 1970 due to new treatments made the repose and good airs of Karamul quickly ceased to be sought after, leading to the difference of 19 full and functioning sanatoriums in 1950 to 12 sanatoriums in 1971. Records reveal that the general movement in 1971 was a venture of 743 patients and exit of 799 patients.
the announced end of the resort was evident, and in the 1970s, the abandonment of some of the sanatoriums was already remarkable, leaving only a few medical support services like clinical analysis laboratory, radiology, pharmacy, among others. Of the 19 sanatoriums, four of them were converted into nursing homes. Another four were remodeled into housing. Palma Sanatorium was rehabilitated to be an institute. Salazar Sanatorium was transformed in the 1990s into the Caramulo Hotel. Three were demolished and the following seven are abandoned. Central Sanatorium. Santa Maria Sanatorium Senhora da Saúde Sanatorium Bela Vista Sanatorium Cirurgical Pavilion Children's Sanatorium and the Grand Sanatorium. The legacy created by Jerónimo Lacerda and continued by Manuel Tapia will never be forgotten or erased by all those who worked, lived and recovered from the disease in the resort. Sua história será relembrada enquanto nela requer importância de perseverança sobre uma luta sem seu pertence.